I think we're live. Welcome to today's Maranatha House Church. We've got about, uh, well, let me show you my clock. I have to turn it around. 11 minutes to go. This is live from a completely different location, um, but nonetheless, from a sofa or seat to your sofa or seat, from your house to our house, or even vice versa, from our strong belief in Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, to wherever you happen to be also. Let's hope the connection works really well today. It says slow connection, but we'll see. Let's just turn it around. Double time loop there. That's us watching us watching us and me pointing. Whoa! Just go on forever. Just a tad of feedback there. Good morning folks, whoever you are. I think I can see Richard and Wendy. And I can see, I don't often look at this side of the screen at this point. So I can see someone I think, or maybe a tree, a scene, a building. It's Fran. Hi there Fran. Fran, Fran the building.
have a very good memory for these things, Fran. It's most impressive. Just under four minutes to go. seconds to go. Favorite He's Nick. actually our favorite Nick. You're, <laughs> You're our second, second favorite, favorite Nick. Nick. <laughs> no, there. In fact, I've got a mate called Nick as well, and he's. Well, you know, I, I don't want to put them anyone in order. So today, you're our favorite Nick. 
Uh, we switch it around. There are no favourites. Everyone's a favourite. Everyone's a winner. And um, we so, all have no partiality. Look, there's extra people there. We don't quite know who you are. Whoever you are, to you. wherever you are, welcome to a slightly different occasion. Brenda's here. Well we done, Brenda. We can't tell you where you are, where you are. We can't tell you where you are or where we are. It's a complete secret. But we are here and you are there. And we're live from the table, from our sofa, well, sofas, to wherever you happen to be. So thank you for joining us this morning. And if you're joining us for the first time, you're very welcome. Now look, we've got here, to see what happens when we press a button. It says reconciliation there. Oh, but we've also got look. here the one and the only, hot pickers, Tony the Blackburn. He's looking a bit older there. How old is Tony Blackburn? Mm, 81, that's correct. 81, 81 years old, just the other day. Happy birthday to Tony. Look at that. You know what, I think of all the DJs, I'm going to say my favourite is Steve, Steve Wright. Wright. Oh, it, it, yeah, uh, but Tony Blackburn is, is equal first place, along with Alan Fluff Freeman and Whispering Bob Harris and Annie Nightingale. You can't have all of them. It's typical of you, isn't it? She's gone as well. I mean, they're all she, really I forgot going. that. I, know, I, forgot I, know, that. I, know. I forget how old some of these ones were. Uh, not like us, who are incredibly young. Can I introduce our special guest? Yeah. Well, if you're allowed to. We have a special guest here. She's going to do it anyway. I am going to do it anyway. Here, she is. here we go, everybody. Look. <laughs> We're related. Hey, oh. sisters. <laughs> so we come to see Jen this morning, and she's, she, she could have gone anywhere. She could have gone to church, things like that. She came to our church. She oh, actually yeah. wanted to do that. So there we go. So what's wrong with her? There you go. Right. So we press the button. We've gone for. Oh, we we did actually have a little brief with that. Sunday the twenty fifth of March, and the weather is uh, pretty good. Um, and how are we doing? <laughs> uh, weather update. Th thanks for asking. Nick I would says hello. I would say we're doing uh, we're doing all right. Right at this precise second, this we precise second, all is good. It is um, good. And uh, I know some of you have been going through the mill as well. Um, so, um, we're all in it together. And remember, if you're in the professionally built Titanic, you're stuffed. But if you're in your amateur built Noah's Ark, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. You know, following God's instructions. Everyone else might have mocked Noah. Um, but they, unfortunately, I was going to say they lived to regret it. They lived a but bit. They, did, they, they lived did, a little while. They didn't live to regret it. They regretted it. It's tragedy. Anyway, look, there we go. Um, we press the button, Tony disappears, and we're going to have a little pray. Um, I haven't updated the prayer things because the list is extensive. There it is there. We'll have the Lord's Prayer in a moment or two's time. Um, and uh, there are so many things. I'm, I'm tempted to delete the list. But it's difficult to do that. You've got lots of things there. I mean, Ulvaldi still, you know, I would forget that name if it wasn't written down there. And that's where that horrible shooting was. Oh, yeah. People are still, you know, there's still consequences oh, people face. That are going to go on for the rest of yeah. the lives of some of the police who yeah. seem to be neglectful and going in quickly. You know, they've got to live with that. It's horrendous. Um, and the family of the shooter, uh, just all of those things. There's lots of things. Yeah. The teachers, are, you know, just going into the school and forever connected with it. There are lots of things like that, and we've all got to deal with our own individual problems. Heather's got to deal with her problems, <laughs> I'm, which are very small in comparison to they're my not, problems. They're big, they're big enough. Uh, they're I was going to say good enough. morning, Matt. Nice to see you this morning. Um, so I don't know what exactly I'm going to pray, but I'm going to pray, and then we'll have the Lord's Prayer. Lord God in heaven, we thank you for this day. Thank you that you've got us through to this day. Um, there have been many days that we've certainly been through, and maybe friends watching been through that have been tough and hard and we've wanted those those days and those moments to end um, once they began and never to have arrived uh, if we could ever have seen them foreseen them coming um, but we're over those in one way or another those days are gone my friend I thought they'd never end but that was concerning happy things wasn't it um, so even the good things vanish into the past and you know that but well, we got the memories of those and lots of those things are lovely thank you for that um, but a lot of troubling things and, and tremendously sad things have taken place in 
not only our lives, but in probably everyone's life has had a moment or two of uh, grief. Um, certainly as we get older, there's a little bit more of that. We, we just pray, Lord, that you'd help us to handle the past and to deal with the present and to not worry about the future. That's worth writing down. That's quite good. <laughs> Lord, help us to not worry about tomorrow, not to give it too much thought, um, but to handle today. And Lord, would you help us to handle today? Lord? And as we think of this list of all these different things from the 700,000 suicides each year, uh, 123 or thereabouts, 1,000, 123,000 abortions every day. We think of the 150 to 160,000 people who die every day. We think of the 300, nearly 300,000 people are born every day. We thank you for new life. Thank you for new little babies. We thank you, Lord, for expected babies for unexpected babies. We pray, Lord, for families that feel they can cope and for families that feel they can't cope. Lord, we thank you that you're able to handle all of the problems of all the world and certainly our own little problems, which are sometimes huge and too hard to handle. So, Lord, please, would you be with us? Lord, I thank you. We personally thank you for continuing to be with us for our dear daughter and our family as a whole, and dear son-in-law, dear grandchildren, Lord, please, would you be with them today? Bless them, we pray. Lots and lots and lots. Lord, if we could ask for anything in all of our lives, we would say, please put your hand of blessing on each and every one that's on our hearts right now, and somehow bless them in a way that you can. Whatever your gift for them is for today, of encouragement, of sustaining grace and power, remembrance of goodness from yourself, of your kindness in the past, of your sustaining power to get them through previous days and that you'll get them through today. Please, Lord, would you put your hand a blessing. It can be of healing for today. We'd say, yes, please. Lord, we thank you that you know the end from the beginning and nothing captures you out. Well, there are lots of things going on in the world around about us that completely captures out. Probably, possibly, maybe, for everyone who watches or watches anything on the internet or on telly, all of us used to be really doubtful concerning um, conspiracy type things. And now many of us are thinking, hang on a minute. We used to think that everyone was kind of okay and we trusted the media and the BBC and lots of organisations and neighbor, everyone. We, we thought we'd tell the truth. And we've begun to realise that there's an awful lot of lying going on. There's a lot of manipulation of truth going on. And it's sometimes really hard to know one thing from another. We thank you, Lord, that you are the judge of all the earth and you will sort everything out one day. We depend on that. And we some ways look forward to it and we pray that you'd cleanse us from all our sins so that we can stand in that day and not fall in that day and that you'd be with us each and every one of us now as we join together and saying our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Can I just say good morning to Deb Thompson, joining us for hey! the first time. No way, how embarrassing, I feel like, oh, I forgot my makeup, makeup, makeup. I'm going to say good morning to Mum and Catherine and uh, Angela. I don't know if you heard that I said hi to you. It looks like Steve or Richard is with us. Steve usually says good morning. He's not done that yet. But anyway, and anybody else, there are a few in stealth mode who we can't see. So we'll say good morning to you. Whether you're in stealth mode or others, <laughs> unlike Heather, who will judge you severely for that, uh, I say you're <laughs> welcome. You're <laughs> You're welcome. So please say hi, sir, and then we can see your name. Uh, I just want to say, if you're kind of brand new to this sort of stuff, 
Church was never meant to be, and never really is, a building. It's, it's people, it's flesh and blood. It's you and me. And uh, whether you believe wholeheartedly and you've got your Bible there, you're reading it all the time, or whether you're just, um, you're like Columbo, investigating and going, hang on a minute, one more thing. I love that. My favourite thing ever. Um, you're, you're welcome. You're welcome indeed. So here we go. We're on day... Of okay. our doing this, 1,434, years. nearly four years coming up. Now, I'm calculating, now you may have questions about this, I'm calculating because in the Bible, a day is counted as 360 days, at least in the Old Testament, 360 days is what they used to, the earlier part of the Old Testament, um, count it as. So we're actually just under, when we get to the 23rd of March, 2024, We'll be on four years. But actually, we're going to be in four years before we get to four years. Do you like that? Oh, okay. Uh, so that's going very deep. Um, and our verse for the year, a little bit for the year, oh, is yeah. if the sun shall set you free, you'll be truly free. You'll be free indeed. It's said in a number of different versions. Heather, can you remember a different version than that one? Oh, the sun shall set, um, set you free. You said you should be free indeed. You shall be truly free. Can you remember any, Jen? Oh, she's doing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Say hi to the Rumleys who are in stealth mode. Yeah, that's fine. And a uh, very up. expensive lamp has just fallen off. This is. We go. knew there'd be issues there today. Is there. It's good. Put it on the top. Oh, again. you want it on the top? Yeah. yeah. I think you jig, rejigged it. Here we go. Oh, I turned it around. Oh, is it upside down? Hang on. What have we got here? Sorry, everyone. Oh, we've actually pulled a bit off. Look at this. What are you doing? <laughs> well, while you're doing that, I've got okay. um, a new ver another version of John 8, 36, which is um, in the Passion Translation, which says, So if the Son sets you free from sin, then become a true Son and be unquestionably free. Oh, that's really boom. good. I like boom. the name. Okay, you win extra points. That's Jennifer. good. You're now officially a member of Maranatha. That was our... Um, our our uh, membership um, that was, she passed legal the test. matters resolved. We'll uh, we'll we weren't talk. sure about her. We'll show you the handshake later. Well, I'm going to say good morning, Jody. Jody, yeah. this is my sister. Okay. Oh, let me turn it around. <laughs> hey, Jody. Hey, everybody. Uh, <laughs> we love Jody and her lovely family. We love everyone else equally as well. We do. Um, so, verse for the day, because I've been thinking about this, and it's what we're thinking of right now reconciliation. All this is from God. This is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself. That's when we're like far off and things aren't quite the way they're meant to be. Ain't, that's a good word. Um, reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That's what, for instance, I'm involved with and what, yeah. you know, we can all play a part in. Um, reconciliation. I reckon we're going to sing some songs now. That's exactly what okay. we're going to do. Now, how do we do this, Head? Well, do I hold this? We're going to put. Pull your chair. We could all three of us sit there. All in our lives. You're, you're in for a penny and for a pound with this, Jen, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, this is the way it is here. It's very <laughs> impromptu. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, so, I was reading in. I don't know if you all. Do you want to bring a chair over, Hunt? Or you might squeeze on the end here. Okay, and I was um we, thank you for your prayers. We've had a by saying Lily is physically recovering from the treatment better. And yesterday we're really thankful she seemed just a little more like her normal self, which was fantastic. Good morning to Catherine. Good morning, Catherine. And um, I'm Richard. But I was thinking about songs of deliverance, and I read that in Psalm 32. Do you want to, oh, you put your Passion translation away. Psalm 32, verse seven, and actually verse six and seven are really good. So maybe you find those. Psalm 32, verse seven: You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with songs of deliverance. And I was just praying. I said, Lord, we could do with some songs of deliverance in our situation. And so. Three, we've only got three songs today, but I think we're going to sing them all the way through. And um, I felt they were songs of deliverance. Over to you, verses 6 and 7. Yeah, verses 6 and 7. Passion translation. Okay. 
This is what I've learned through it all. All believers should confess their sins to God. Do it every am I right in the place? Yeah. Do it every time God has uncovered you in the time of exposing. If you do this, when sudden storms of life overwhelm, you'll be kept safe. Lord, you are my secret hiding place, protecting me from these troubles, surrounding me with songs of gladness. Your joyous shouts of rescue release my breakthrough. Good. That's good. That's mm. good. And thank you, Catherine. That's great. So let's start with 793. You are my hiding so place. So if you're at home and you're watching for the first time, you're thinking 793. Hang on a minute. And you're running around your bookshelves. Mission Don't place. worry. You can probably... Google it, but if you're watching on your phone, uh, don't try and do it at the Use same it. time. Um, and you can, uh, there we go, you can find the song. The first line for the song is, what's it, Tony? You are my hiding place. You are place. my hiding place. Or you can just join in and listen to the beautiful singing of two angels Three. and oh. me. <laughs> and then <laughs> Okay, so this is all, we don't know how loud this is going to be. Here we go. Here we go. It's got an intro. To remember. You are my hiding place. Let me do it. One, one, two. Oh, there, there is. Yeah, I actually turned the page. She's turned the page. So over. when I was yeah. lost, you came and rescued me. Yeah. And if you're googling it, it's by Kate Miles Simmons. Uh, okay. Sounds like a song of deliverance to me. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's hope it's not too Just, quick. The, I'm sure it's most likely to be. Yeah. So we can that sounded all right. I'm going to say yeah, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can only go downhill. <laughs>
Give that a seven and a quarter out of ten. <laughs> we were... It was. I think it was better than seven and a quarter. <laughs> no, it's... I'm I, an eight, I, a solid eight and a half. The reason I say seven, I don't see eight because eight isn't my favourite number. Seven is my favourite number. Okay, we got another song. We have our last one, which is what he's done. Yeah, I'm looking for the number. I'm it's looking not for the in number. there. It's oh, not in there. Oh, it's what he's done okay. by Jacob, Jacob Suger and Chris, Christian Stanfield. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> From Passion something or another. Okay. Mm -hmm. These no, are the words here. No, but it starts to see on the Hill of Calvary if you're Googling it. Okay. It's a nice Could easy one. Yeah, I like it. We have sung it a few times. We have sung it for a few weeks. So. Yeah. Deep breath. I'm enjoying this. We're going to go for a nine. Nice. Nice. Hmm. Well, I think we got a nine first song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Hopeful. Here we go. <laughs> Appreciated that. And uh, I think Heather Tarrington's with us today. Good morning, Heather. Hey, good morning, uh, Craig. Hey, whoever you are, you're unbelievably welcome. We, we, you know, it's hard enough doing these things, and when no one joins in, you got no <laughs> idea. You got no idea how hard it is. So it's great. We're all in this together. So that's really good. And I just want to acknowledge in front of the camera that Heather broke this part here. Uh, but I can fix it. We have the technology. Well, we've got some glue somewhere, and we can fix it. So there we go. Jade, Jade was with us. Hi, Jade. That was lovely. Hey. Um, there was someone else. Fran enjoyed the song. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah. Was 
Was there any particular voice that stood out that can go forward to the next round? <laughs> Let's, ooh, it's okay, that, time. Yeah, it's time. Yeah, I think we need a miracle. Okay, now. I what it's Psalm is it? Psalm 79. It, no, it's Psalm 78, and it's the it's last one. This is it. We finished it Psalm 78 today. So let me just hold the little gimbal here okay. whilst Heather reads it. This is just the, the last few words. 72 verses in this psalm. We broke it into four parts. And this is the last part. Hopefully you can see that. Here we go. And this Read is it talking to about Israel in the wilderness, yeah. having come out of Egypt before well, they get to the land. Israel is a picture of kind of like everyone, and really. After that, you know. And that we're rebellious. Yeah. We, we choose the wrong path. We don't obey the heavenly satnav. We do our own thing. We're our own, uh, you know, we follow our own hearts rather than God's heart for us. Um, and... Uh, it's a testament to God's kindness to us as rebels. And he loves to reconcile. And there's echoes of that in this here now. Heather is okay. going to read from verse 56 to 72. <clears throat> Yet they tested and provoked the Most High God and did not keep his testimonies, but turned back and acted unfaithfully like their fathers. They were turned aside like a deceitful bow. For they provoked him to anger with their high places and moved him to jealousy with their carved images. When God heard this, he was furious and greatly abhorred Israel, so that he forsook the tabernacle of Shiloh, the tent he had placed among men, and delivered his strength into captivity and his glory into the enemy's hand. He also gave his people over to the sword and was furious with his inheritance. The fire consumed their young men, and their maidens were not given in marriage. Their priests fell by the sword, and their widows made no lamentation. Then the Lord awoke as from a sleep, like a mighty man who shouts because of wine, and he beat back his enemies. He put them to a perpetual reproach. Moreover, he rejected the tent of Joseph and did not choose the tribe of Ephraim, but chose the tribe of Judah, Mount Zion, which he loved. And he built his sanctuary like the heights, like the earth which he has established forever. He also chose David, his servant, and took him from the sheepfolds, from following the ewes that had young he brought him, to shepherd Jacob his people, and Israel his inheritance. So he shepherded them according to the integrity of his heart, and guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. That that's last great. verse yeah, is yeah. fabulous. I know, and that's about, you know, it is about David. As I read it um, the other day, I was thinking, um, who's that talking about? It seems to be talking about the Lord, the way that he deals with things. God uses different people at different times, and he certainly used David. I think you're just holding it in a strange fashion. Um, just turn, Still, turn it around. I can't, right it's not. You can, you can just turn it on that. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay, um, and... Uh, yeah, so there you go. Hopefully it makes sense. Sorry, right? no, I'm fine. interrupted That's if fine. I get your name. Fine. Okay, we now have some communion. So if you've got some wine, we've got some wine. Can sit back over there? Uh-huh, we've got some wine and we've got some... Uh, we've got some... Rice cakes. Rice cakes. Now, if there's one thing I don't like, it's rice cakes. But it's nothing to do with liking, it's to do with loving. So That's okay. Hello everyone, um, it says here in Luke's Gospel chapter 22, um, entitled in this version of the Bible, and all these different versions, if you're confused by it, it's just, they're just written in different ways so that different people would understand them better, because we all speak in a different sort of lingo. So these two are from Hampshire, so they need a different version than someone who's educated from Wiltshire might use. Basically, that's it. There may be a slight, uh, maybe a slight exaggeration, and I may be just partially incorrect politically with that. Um, <laughs> but it says here, um, and when the hour had come, 
there was there was a moment that the whole of history was edging towards and aiming at, and Jesus himself was focusing on going to Jerusalem. It says that he set his face like a flint to go to Jerusalem. He was determined to go there. People like Thomas, who's someone who's known, you know, just then at that point and up for the, the following little while as the doubter. Um, right now in heaven, he's saying, please stop calling me the doubter. We're allowed to change. So Thomas, you know, if you can hear us in heaven, you know, we know. Um, and I know what I'm like. We're doubters at points in our life. He's known as a doubter. Um, but that didn't last forever. He, he went from doubt to whole high, whole high faith. But actually at this point, or just prior to this, when Jesus set his face like a flint to go to Jerusalem, he said, let's go, let's go with Jesus. Let's go with Jesus. Um, and he was sort of on the coattails of the Lord Jesus to go to Jerusalem. And then, then he had all his doubts about the whole thing. We're allowed to be like that. It's not eternally acceptable. We don't want to stay like that. There's no benefits in being a doubter. But, you know, that's, that's the way that it is. So it says here, when the hour had come, he sat down with the 12 apostles with him. You know, one of those was Judas. One of them was going to betray the Lord Jesus. One of them was, in a way, an eternal doubter, a deliberate doubter. You don't want that doubt. Actually, Charles Darwin speaks about his doubt gradually coming over him like a, a cloud of darkness until its work was done. So that's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. You don't want that. You don't want your doubt to go any further than, you know, it's gone. And then just hand your life over to the Lord and say, Lord, I, I need light rather than darkness. I need um, faith and truth more than I need doubt and wherever that might lead. So Judas was there as well. Then Jesus said to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. There are lots of things I want to do in life. Um, but all, all of the things that any of us want to do in life pan into insignificance. They don't even rate on the scale. They, they, they may rate on a scale, but not on this scale. There's only one thing on this um, level of calibration, and it is, is Jesus desiring with fervent desire, you know, this is God in the flesh, really wanting to go to the cross and die for you. But he wanted to do this, and it says here, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup, gave thanks, and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. And I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took some bread, gave it, uh, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after the supper saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood which is shed for you. Wow. It's just extraordinary. There's a, this bread and this wine are a picture of Jesus' sacrifice for us. Um, I can't, we've got, a, we've got a rice cake here, you can't break it, but we can, uh, we can say thank you. And we say thank you, Lord Jesus, for what we have here is a picture of your body which was given up for us. It's just, just some bread, as it were. We're just taking this as a remembrance of your goodness towards us in that you didn't hold anything back you gave everything for us and we just want to say thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you uh, we don't perhaps really understand it fully i don't but i'm very grateful for this present from heaven for people someone like me like us in jesus name amen, amen. so if you've got a bit of bread i don't think i've ever broken one of these before don't have to eat all of it. Remember, it is impossible. Um, but uh, if you've got something you'd like to eat now, a biscuit, whatever, a piece of bread, and say thank you to the Lord. There are lots of things in life that we forget 
And uh, on Friday night, was it Friday night? I don't know, maybe Thursday night, I had to go and get some fuel and I forgot my wallet and I even drove past the petrol station on the first go. And then I, um, on the second go, I drove past the petrol station and I ended up going to our local Lidl's and I thought, well, I'll, I'll get some get some wine. Loads of things we forget in life. There are very few things, there aren't many things, there's one or two things that are really good to remember. And this bread and this wine being pictures of the Lord's sacrifice for us are those things which we would say, remember this above all things. Forget everything else, remember this. The Lord Jesus says that this wine, this red wine, is a picture of his blood, of his sacrifice. Someone had to pay the price of sin. That's, that's what it's about. Someone had to pay the price. You know, I've had a few fines in life, maybe you have as well, and you've got to pay the price. You, you know, you, there's, there's, there's an exam that you have to go through, and you have to have a certain pass mark to get through. I once got 50%, and they said, yeah, you passed. And I still look back at that and think, no, I didn't. You know, actually, a hundred percent is a pass mark. Really, being really honest, isn't it? You know, we set the the barrier. Well, seventy five percent, you get an A. How can that be? How can it be? Well, I'm glad I don't think I've got an A. Uh, but it just strikes me as bonkers. It's a hundred percent, and it certainly is with God. It's a hundred percent. It's a hundred percent. He wants us. He wants us complete and whole, and a hundred percent. He don't want us partial he wants a whole lot he's done it all for us and we say thank you to him so thank you lord jesus for your blood that was shed for us we're very very grateful for the sacrifice that pays the price so that as far as you're concerned we're 100 percent. i don't feel 100 percent, but lord you as far as you see us and anyone even right now who wants to become a christian we can go well i'd quite like to be 100 percent you can be also a hundred percent a hundred percent just say thank you say you know sorry for your sins you've got to be sorry for, if you're not sorry for your sins you know it ain't going to work you've got to be sorry for your sins god is angry with our sins he doesn't judge us for the good stuff he judges us for the bad stuff and i got loads of bad stuff we want loads of bad stuff and he wants to forgive us he doesn't just do it he He's already done it. We just have to accept it. And most people don't accept it. But we, I accept it. I say, yes, please. Thank you very, very much. So, um, in a way, every day is my birthday. That's why I look so old. Um, you know, and I say, thank you, Lord Jesus, for this picture, mm. which is, you know, we put pictures on our walls, which are important. But this is the picture which is ever before us. And we're very grateful in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. You've got a bit of wine, just take that now and just say, thank you, Lord. There's nothing kind of weird or creepy about this. It's just a picture of, of saying thank you to the Lord for his sacrifice for us. Kind of saluting him and acknowledging his goodness. Wow, that's powerful. And you know, is that powerful. is powerful. And it is powerful. There's, there, yeah, Heather's going to sing a song. Um, the words are there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. It goes on, probably slightly higher, that's as high as I can go. And it's true, there is, there is wonderful truth in that. I uh, would like to spend more time, but we've got to go over there because time's running out. Here we go. I don't know if you're still there, Carolyn. If you are, um, it's lovely to see you. Some people I can see, some people I can't see. It's the way it seems to be. Well, if you're there or you're watching later on um, in some sort of time loop, you're welcome. Oh, we've got those glasses there, the ones I need for the moment. I press the button. 
Let's pray, which means we're at that point where I have a look at this, put that there, so I keep an eye on time. Lord, we do pray that as we just look at your word just for a moment or two and think about what you have to say to us about reconciliation, that we'd learn something, that you bless us in our hearts. There'd be something going on inside there, something going on inside there. It's important that there's something going on there and there. It's not just an emotional thing. It's not just a mental thing. It's, it's, it's body and soul and spirit. It's the whole person reacting. So Lord, help me, help us, help those who watch now and watch later on to react to this in the way that is best. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Okay, press the button. What have we got? We've got this bit here, reconciliation. What a word. I can't say I use that word very often. No. I, I can't say I use that. I've used that word a few times in my life. Um, reconciliation. It's often used in sorting out disputes between people. I suppose that's why you'd use it anyway. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and there is a need for that. So whenever I ask, we went out for a hot chocolate the other day, when I said the other day, earlier on, and it was very nice too, and the guy said, as everyone always says, anything else I can get for you? And as you always as say. As I always say, yes, well, peace, please. Uh, and they always go, oh, we're fresh out of that. Um, you know, the whole world needs reconciliation. Um, that, that's what we need. That's what we need. You know, that inner conflict, even if you think, oh, man, our neighbours are great, family is great, got money in the bank, I feel well, I've got no problems. Oh, but there's a little bit of an ache inside here because I'm realising the time is whizzing through and I'm now, like me, 35 years old. Plus, it's hard to say. I can't believe it. And time is short. I can remember when I got to 30 and I thought that's got to be about halfway through. And there are people in this room, including myself, that are nearly double that. And I'm going, well, that's, this must be halfway through now. This is definitely halfway through. And life is short. And we've got to be ready to meet our maker. And we can be. We thought about that just then. We can be ready to meet our maker. And if we're ready to meet our maker, we're ready to face another day. It's another thing worth writing down. This, these, are good, these are helpful little sayings. That actually, if we're ready to meet our maker, we can face tomorrow. We can face this afternoon. And we can not only face it if it's uncertain and difficult, but we can handle it better. Life can be better. Even, you know, I'd say our lives are pretty tough at, tough at the moment, pretty difficult at the moment. But you know what? They're fine. All is okay. And it's a privilege, a painful privilege, but a privilege nonetheless to go through these times of difficulty. Um, wouldn't choose it. But I believe and trust in the Lord that he knows what he's doing and he can, he can get us through. Get, if he can get us through, he can get you through. So here we go. Reconciliation, what we got here? Hi, uh, Rowena. We've got a picture of forgiveness there and three crosses there. Jesus is on the middle cross. Someone on his right, someone on his left. The one on one side, I think it was on his right, trusted in the Lord at the last minute. Today you will be with me in paradise. And the one on the other side went and died without Christ. And yet Christ was so, so near. near. Extraordinary. And there's that scripture again, which Heather's going to read out. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Yeah, there we go. Now, you can't read all that because it's too small, but I want to read to you just a little bit of it. Let me just read a little bit. In fact, let me read a little bit. You could just focus can on I, me. Can I go in on the bit? Yeah, 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 yeah. Where is it? So I would recommend, just for time's sake, is that you read 2 Corinthians chapter 5. ka this bit here. It's really interesting. It's all about... It leads up to and underlines this last little section here about reconciliation. And it's just great. It's really, really, really good. It will bless you. So if you've never come across, you think, what's 2 Corinthians chapter 5? And he said chapter 5, and it doesn't even say chapter there. These, these um, titles are just um, guides to help us reference particular bits of the book. They're just divisions. They weren't there originally uh, in the original uh, writing of the Bible, but they're there now because, hey, that it, it's, a, it's a benefit to us. It would be far more beneficial if we just read the Bible all, all the way through all the time. 
but we're not like that. We should be like that, but we're not like that. We should know the Bible better. So someone starts to read a little bit of the Bible out, and they go, oh, yeah, that'd be that bit there, and then they can repeat it again. But unfortunately, we're not like that. I wish I was like that. And 2 Corinthians, this was some words, a letter, one of two letters that was written to a church in Corinth. Anyone ever been to uh, Pogna Regis? It's nowhere near that. Corinth is in Greece. Greece. Anyone ever been to Greece? I've been to Greece. I love Greece. Fantastic. They're in a load of debt, but not as bad debt as Japan. Japan is in a load of debt. You think America's in trouble, Japan's in more trouble. Incredible days that we're living in. And this is all because people turn their back on God. We don't turn our back on God. God sorts out everything in a wonderful way that even when things seem to be falling apart, they're not. We're okay. It's not easy, but it's okay. We're reconciled to God. There's a lovely old song. Reconciled and reconciled. Reconciled. It's about being adopted into his family. There's nothing wrong with being adopted. And actually everyone can be adopted into the family of God. Not some weird cult rubbish. Avoid all that. This is about true knowing your maker stuff. This is the way that really works. This isn't religion. This is faith in the creator. Bypasses all of that. Goes straight to the source, Jesus Christ. It says, by him all things were made that are made. And without him nothing was made that you can in any way perceive that's around about you. He is the creator of all things. And he came and died for each and every one of us so that we could be saved from our sins. We accept him as our Lord and as our Saviour. We can do that, which is great. And that's what reconciliation is. And it says here, right at the end of 2 Corinthians in chapter 5, it says here, Now then, now then because of all that went before, we are ambassadors for Christ. We've got a job to do. That's what my job is. It's an unpaid job, and I love it. As though God were pleading through us. You know, if you ever pled for someone, have you ever, you know, oh, please do this. You know, here we have as though God were pleading through us. The man Paul wrote this, a guy called Paul who was sure he was right and then found out he was wrong and then everything was turned upside down and he started following Christ as his own saviour and Lord and he dedicated his life, the rest of his life, to following him and he realised the way things actually were. Maybe you feel a little bit like they were as well. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. So that means my, personally, my greatest wish isn't for this, that or the other. If I can have one wish, you, you, you might be thinking now, what would be my one wish right now? And you, might, you might think it would be one thing, okay? But my greatest wish, and I know... If you know our situation, you might think, well, that's got to be his greatest wish. No, my greatest wish is that each and every one of us be reconciled to God. That's my greatest wish. And you might think, well, he's deluded, he's bonkers. Surely your greatest wish is this. Well, actually, my greatest wish for my daughter, I came true a long time ago when she trusted in the Lord. That is all we need. All we need is Christ. We were walking through Kingsbridge down in South Devon many years ago and we came around a corner and there was a long entrance with beautiful flowers laid out on either side a little pathway leading to the a, a little chapel front door and above the door it said Christ or Jesus is the answer to our every need and I thought well yeah I, I go for that that's true be reconciled to God, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. That needs a lot of unpacking, which we may do another time. But all you've got to do, because this is what it says in the Bible, is you ask God, you pray to God, as you have your Bible, get grab a Bible, Google it, do whatever you wish, and you grab your Bible and you say, God, I, I don't even know which way to look, but please would you, open up the eyes of my understanding, my heart, my mind, to understand what this means as I read this. Maybe like three times. Help me to read it a few times. And if you seek in that manner, you know, not, not just go, you know, uh, no, I don't get it. Uh, it's rubbish. 
if you, if you seek in that manner, you say, Lord God, help me to understand this. I don't even know where, where to look. and I don't even know if you exist. He is guaranteed to illuminate you. He will illuminate your understanding so you, you'll, you'll be able to grab hold of things that no one else will understand. Others will go, what are you talking about? But you'll go, I get it now. I get it now. That he, Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, was made to be sin to, so that he would be punished instead of me being punished. Because why? God loves you. He loves you and he loves me so much he wanted to get in trouble instead of you or me getting in trouble, instead of his creation getting in trouble. We, we, we have loads of questions wrapped around that and questions are good and Jesus has all the answers. Okay, what have we got? So this is the verse for the day. Um, then Joseph, this is from chapter 45, um, verse 1. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all his attendants, all those Egyptian servants. And he cried out, send everyone away from me. So none of them were with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers. Now, we haven't got quite enough time to go through the whole thing, but I just want to just very briefly just tell you um, a little bit of the story of Joseph. Do you remember it? Maybe you've seen the film. I've never seen Technicolor Dreamcoat. Have you seen it? You ever go to I've seen Joseph. Yeah, I saw it in years ago. Yeah, well, I've, I've never been to the cinema. No one's ever taken me. No one loves me. That's complete rubbish. How dare you lie to everybody <laughs> right now? Well, they, they do love me, but I've never been to. <laughs> but I've read the Bible, so I don't need to go. There you That's go. what I was trying to say. Let me read you this, okay? This, this, this sums it all up beautifully. The first few words, and then I just want to share a tiny little bit about it as we go through. It says here in chapter 45, this is when it all, everything comes to light. You want to read it all before, because it's amazing. Then Joseph could no longer restrain himself before all those who stood before him. And he cried out, make everyone go out from me. And I wonder what language he cried that out in, because he was disguising himself. He was speaking in the, the tongue of the Egyptians, and his... Uh, Hebrew brothers were speaking in another tongue. He understood everything that they'd said, and they didn't understand anything he'd said, and it was through an interpreter. And I wonder whether in that he cried out in their tongue. Probably not. Probably in the tongue of the Egyptians, so that they understood and they went out. But it was certainly plain, and they went out. Uh, make everyone go out from me. So no one stood with him while Joseph made himself known to his brothers. This must have been the most awesome and awful and frightening and upsetting and eventually joyful, tricky moment ever. I've had some tricky moments where there's suddenly, oh no, but this, this, was, this is above that. So he wept aloud and the Egyptians in, on the house of Pharaoh heard it, so this was genuine and weeping. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Does my father still live? I mean, just imagine the look on Joseph's brother's faces as he said, I am Joseph. And they, the brothers could not answer him. They had a lot to say throughout all these years, but at this moment... They had nothing to say, but they were dismayed in his presence. You know, if we come before God and God says, I'm God, and we don't know him, and we suddenly realize who he is, there's an echo of that going on here. Dismayed in his presence. Or you can actually be his child, the child of God, you could be reconciled, you could be on the Lord's side and all could be well and this could be wonderful. I'm really looking forward to meeting the Lord God, the creator of the universe, Jesus Christ, the son of God. I'm look, I, I can't think of anything, there's nothing else, that's all I'm looking forward to. Someone might say, oh, if you notice the streets are paved with gold, look at, wow, look at all the angels. No one's going to say that, we're not going to be looking at the angels, we're not going to be looking at the streets of gold, we're going to be looking at the Lord Jesus Christ. Looking at his hands and his feet and the, the marks on his head and the spear mark in his side. Glorified and wonderful and strange and beautiful. 
But we're going to be looking at him, not dismayed in his presence. So be ready to meet him. And Joseph, verse 4, said to his brothers, please come near to me. Not depart from me, I never knew you. He could have said that. I might have been tempted to say that. Get out from here. I'm Joseph. You, you ruined my life. Actually, you haven't ruined my life because there was a plan going on. There's a plan going on. Come near to me. And Jesus wants to say that to you. He want, he, and actually, he's not been wanting to say He's been saying this for years. Saying it to Israel. Saying it to the people of Gaza. Saying it to Netanyahu. Saying it to Putin. Saying it to Biden. Saying it to Trump. Saying it to everyone. Saying it to everyone. Come near to me. And we go... Ugh. Uh, maybe tomorrow, or, you know, whenever, or I don't even believe you exist. It's really insulting to God. Today is a day of salvation. Come to God today. Um, come near to me. I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. There's quite a bit of this, whom you did this to. I mean, it, the brothers didn't need to hear anything at this point, but they're being told, and it's important to get it all out. It's like when you feel ill and you've got to be sick. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's the way it works. And, you know, I hate being sick. I've only been sick a few times in my life. But you feel, and you think, for me, I think I'm going to die when I'm going to be sick. Heaven knows this. And, but afterwards, you feel so much better. You, you haven't died. And you know what? These are, these are horrible things that the brothers have done to him. Horrible things, awful things. Imagine selling your brother. They wanted to kill him. They weren't good brothers to have. Most of them, they were pretty rubbish. There was a gradient of it, but they weren't great. They were quiet ones, they were, they were, they were loud ones. They were, you know, there we go. We go, oh, we nearly used up our time. We go. Um, but now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves. You know, the anger many years ago was towards Joseph. They kind of buried the sin. Don't be angry with yourselves. They've got every reason to be angry with yourselves. Because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. This was God's doing. For these two years, the famine has been in the land, and there are still five in which there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. And God sent me before you to preserve a posterity for you in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. I love that. And it goes on. Please read it. When you switch off in a few minutes time, just read chapter 45 of Genesis. It's absolutely wonderful. Absolutely amazing. And just do your heart good. Um, and uh, I just want to pray concerning that. Lord, I do just pray that as we whiz through a few little things there, Lord, that you would please um, speak to me, speak to us, speak to all the people, and would you reconcile us all, would you glue us together, Lord, this little lamp thing came on here, and it was stuck on, and it didn't really break it, it was stuck on poorly, it wasn't stuck on with good glue, it was going to break off sooner or later, Lord, I thank you that your ministry of reconciliation puts a glue on us, on our hearts and our minds that fixes us securely to a destination which is heaven and a purpose on earth which is good and which is just like Joseph describes for the blessing of many. So Lord, please knit us together like a true family of brothers and sisters in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Is it, can I ask a question? Yeah. Is it fair to say if there's going to be true reconciliation... There is forgiveness somewhere at some point yeah, by yeah, someone. Yeah, yeah. Well, do you know what? The, Joseph had forgiven his brothers during that period of time. And as the penny dropped for them, and it actually took a long time. There was a lot of sin in the brothers' lives. A lot of sin. Um, and it, it took a long time. The consequences of that... Yeah, they, it lasts a lifetime, you know. We, it, but as far as God is concerned, forgiven. And you know, what? in my life, I I know that I'm a great sinner, but God is a great Savior, and He is well able to forgive you and me. And you might think people have said to me, uh, "Well, you you've done nothing."
that wrong. And, you know, you're a good guy. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm nearly as bad as Heather. I was going to say uh, that they should ask yeah, me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, no, no, <laughs> we're all the same. We're all the same. We all need to be forgiven. And we can be forgiven. And being forgiven is absolutely wonderful. Wonderful. Feeling the weight of sin and then feeling, you know, it's important to feel the weight of it. And the brothers felt the weight of it. Joseph laid it on over a period of time and then lifted it away. And as they went back to get the dad, the last thing he said to them, do you know what it was, Heather? The last thing he said to them when they were, go, he said, go, go and get dad. Go and bring him down. He's 130 years old. Go and get him down from uh, Canaan. Bring him down here. 130 years old. What was, oh, oh and when you go, don't quarrel amongst yourselves. Oh. What were they going to quarrel about? What had gone on? What had gone on? That's good. What had gone on? That, you know, that's it's powerful stuff. Let it go. Let it go. Okay. So if you'd like to join us ever on, not online, but join us online, but you haven't liked to join us, we had one the other day, uh, we got the next one on the 3rd of next March, Sunday. next Sunday at our house, 7.30 in the evening, you'd be unbelievably welcome. Um, where is that, Heather? Oh, that is in Barcelona. That's correct, it's in Israel. It's oh, is it Israel? The, uh, it is the Abraham Hostel. Oh, yeah. There it is there. Jerusalem. Look at that. It is. Look, there's hardly anyone there. You went there, there. Jen. There you yeah, go. So is this that. live? Because they haven't got any visitors going, have they? Just I don't know. There are a few people. Everywhere. There are people in these hammocks here. Um, well, there's you, a lot of displaced yeah. Israelis, aren't there, as well? Oh, uh, it's the right pickle. Right pickle. They, Israel needs reconciliation. It thinks yeah. it's fine. No, it's not. Uh, what have we got here? Check out this film. Check out this film. This is a film we recommend. Always a winner. Um, we approve of this film. This was on YouTube. It was good. Free. It was yeah, good. Right. It was, it was, yeah. It's, I tell you what, all the things we recommend are wholesome. Yeah. They're wholesome. They would do you good. You might go, oh, it's a bit lame. But it's not lame. It's wholesome. It will do you good. It's like some really good medicine. Sometimes it might have a little bit too much sugar on it. And you go, oh. But actually, it's really, really good medicine. There we go. And here we go. May God's blessings surround you each day. You trust him and walk in his way. May his presence within, you know, within God and keep you from sin. Go in joy, go in peace, go in love. And then our last little bit here. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Look at that. We've finished almost exactly oh, on time. Really good with oh, pretty good. Um, uh, it's lovely to have had a beautiful congregation with us today. Jane, um, right, you need to come and just say goodbye. To you've me got to say goodbye. I go this way. Um, there we go. Then my two favourite <laughs> ladies. I've got other oh, favourite Oh, hi, ladies. Steve. I managed to say hi to you. You joined a bit late today, Steve. Steve. <laughs> God bless you, each and every one of you. Love you all. Really appreciate your support in this. We couldn't do it without you. Sometimes there's only a few joining. Sometimes there's more. And it's... It is deeply encouraging. We feel we're meant to be doing this, continuing to do this. It is really, really nice doing this in our house um, with people coming along. So if you'd like to come along this Sunday coming, not tonight, next Sunday night, 7.30, you're welcome. So thank you so much for joining us yeah. this morning. It's been really great. hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, loads of love. And we'll see you soon. Now, does anyone know how to turn this off? Bye. Is it Bye. Up in here?